20 years ago after I started habitat gardening, I put out some milkweed for monarch butterflies. And in the beginning, I got a few more monarchs than usual, but it wasn't really doing too well until I started putting in a concentration of milkweed plants, uh, some of them in this location and some of them under the ficus tree. One of the first things I noticed was that ladybugs appeared on the milkweed, and that's a good thing because they eat the aphids that are attracted to the milkweed. The other thing that appears is milkweed beetles, sometimes lots and lots of them. And eventually I started seeing a few more monarchs and sometimes they appeared like they had just recently hatched. After that, I finally began to notice some small caterpillars and some larger caterpillars. And then I saw multiple caterpillars so here's the life cycle. The monarchs mate and the female lays the eggs on the milkweed. And after some time, the first of the caterpillars appears and that caterpillar continues to eat and get larger until it gets full size, full grown, and then it crawls off someplace and does this. And then that turns into a chrysalis. About two weeks later, the chrysalis turns from that green color to kind of a reddish-orange black color because what you're seeing is a monarch butterfly through the chrysalis. Then you come along and you find a monarch that has recently hatched out. They look deformed to begin with. Like here, they have uh, small wings and a huge abdomen. But what they do over a period of an hour or two is slowly pump all the fluids in their abdomen out into their wings and they continue to get larger and larger until they look like a full-grown monarch. But in the beginning, they are very docile. One December, when my grandkids were over, three or four monarchs hatched out and they were in this very docile stage, you know, not even 24 hours old. And the grandkids had a great time with these docile monarch butterflies. Jenna had gotten a new camera for Christmas and she had just a wonderful time taking pictures of these monarch butterflies. So that's the life cycle. After mating, the female lays the eggs, the caterpillars eat the milkweed until they get large, and then they go off and form a chrysalis. And sometimes they form them in very unusual locations, like on the side of a candle or at the top of a tomato frame in the garden, or strangest of all, on the jowl of this fearsome mountain lion. And it hatched out just fine and went through the process of slowly expanding its wings until it was a full-blown monarch butterfly. And now I guess I have to deliver some bad news, which is I haven't been doing very well in, in uh, 2018 and 2019, and I'm not the only one. In coastal California in 2017, there were an estimated 150,000 monarch butterflies. In 2018, they were only able to identify about 20,000. And that kind of squares with what happened in my own backyard. The numbers seem to be really down. And this problem is not limited to the West Coast. It goes all the way across the country. The numbers are down. There are probably two main reasons for it. One of them is habitat destruction. That is the milkweed that they absolutely need in order to lay their eggs and have their pet caterpillars grow is slowly shrinking. And the other thing, of course, is insecticides, pesticides, herbicides, and so forth. The herbicides that kill the milkweed and pesticides and insecticides that kill the monarchs. So planting some milkweed in your backyard is probably a positive step, but probably even more important than that is to eliminate or greatly restrict the amount of pesticide and insecticide that you use because the smallest amount is able to kill butterflies and other pollinators. 
So, reporting live from Fullerton, California. Until next time, enjoy your gardens.